Okay, so now we're going to talk about iterative methods for solving systems with linear equations. So up to this point, we've been talking about what are called direct methods. Uh, and um, the main example we've looked at is uh, LU decomposition. So, uh, so let me sort of just briefly recap uh, what happens. It's like with LU decomposition. So this is what is called a direct method for solving linear system, say AX is equal to B. And um, what is meant by direct is that there are no iterations. Uh, and um, so with an iterative scheme, you get a sequence of approximations which converge to the solution. Um, with LU decomposition, there is a systematic process by which you Obviously, it's like act on the system of equations, um, but the end result is an answer. It's uh, and it involves a finite number of computations, and the end result is uh, what is the exact answer. It's like except for round off error, so uh, so you only have round off error. Okay, and the total amount of work. Um, it's approximately two thirds uh, in cubed floating point operations. Okay, um, and so the problem, if you will, with uh, direct methods like LD decomposition uh, is that if you're looking at large matrices, um, then this computational cost, which is cubic um, in the dimension, it's like the matrix, is like becomes prohibitive. So for large matrices, right, this big O of n cubed op, uh, sort of cost becomes prohibitive. Okay. <coughs> so the idea then. Um, is to develop a method uh, that approximates the solution um, by taking sort of fewer operations, okay, much fewer. Okay, so, uh, so instead of a direct method, right, uh, we're going to consider uh, an iterative approach. And we've already seen iterative methods uh, used, say, for the solution of a nonlinear equation. So in root finding, for example, things like the Newton method is an example of an iterative scheme uh, where you, again, it's like in a sequence, it's like of uh, approximations which uh, under suitable conditions converge to the answer you're looking for. So we'd like to do something similar, uh, but now for solutions of systems of linear equations. Um, so let me sort of um, say a little bit about how one might go about doing this uh, in, in a very broad sense, okay? So you have AX is equal to B, okay? 
So, so let's look at uh, sort of iterative methods for this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, write a, a some linear combination of uh, matrices. So let a equals to n minus p, for example. Okay, and so when I substitute this expression into that equation, uh, I get the following. All right, so I get n times x is equal to p times x plus b. Okay. And so the iteration we're going to have, so this is an example of uh, almost a fixed point equation. Right, so if you can, um, okay, so in fact, let's just write it as if it was a fixed point equation, right? So I'm going to have x as an inverse applied to px plus b, right? So now this is a fixed point equation. So this is a fixed point equation. And I can consider now the fixed point uh, iteration associated with that. So the fixed point iteration for that is uh, x n plus one is equal to n inverse uh, p x n plus b, right? Um, and so obviously uh, when I choose the decomposition a is equal to n minus p, I need to have something where computing the inverse of this is easy. So I, um, so I, so basically um, here, right, n has to be non-singular and easy to invert in a sense. Well, you don't really need to invert it. You just need to be able to solve a linear equation which involves that as a coefficient matrix. Okay, but, uh, but it certainly has to be non-singular and, and there has to be some sense in which it's easy to solve for. Um, all right, so this is now a fixed point iteration. Um, all right, so, so let's look at um, two simple examples for this. Okay, so there are two cases. So there's Jacobi, okay. So Jacobi uses N as the diagonal of A. Then uh, there's also what's called Gauss Seidel. Okay, where n is the lower triangular part. Okay. Uh, so, so I'll, I'll look at these examples in a little bit. It's like, but for now, let me just uh, um, say. Um, actually, maybe let's go ahead and, and look at an example of this. Okay. Um, all right. So let's look at the example of Jacobi. All right. So, okay, so I have an A matrix, let's just call that uh, 9, 1, 1, 2, 10, 3, 3, 4, 11, then the B, I'm just going to call it B1, B2, 
v2 v3 okay so I'm going to write a as uh, n minus p a is equal to n minus p okay so this is going to be the diagonal 9 10 11 minus <coughs> This is 0, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, 0, minus 3, minus 3, minus 4, 0. Okay, and the iteration is uh, x n plus 1 is equal to 9, 10, 11 inverse applied to v1, v2, v3, plus um, p times x, 0, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, 0, minus 3, minus 3, minus 4, 0, applied to, um, <coughs> let's call that x1, x2, x3, at the end of stage. Okay, all right, so let's see what you get there. Okay, so this gives me, uh, so it's easier to invert this diagonal, right? You just divide uh, by the diagonal entries component-wise. All right, so, so x1, n plus 1, x2 n plus 1 x3 n plus 1 right is equal to okay, 1 9 times um, b1 minus x to n minus um, x three n okay one tenth uh, b two minus um, two x one n minus three x three n then um, 1 11 of b3 minus 3x1 n minus 4x2 n. Okay. All right. So, um, so what have we done here? Right, so one way to see what we've done is to maybe let's write down this system of equations ax equal to b uh, component wise, right? So that's 9x1 uh, plus x2 plus x3 minus 4x1 plus x3 plus x2 equals to b1, 2x1 plus 10x2 plus 3x3 equals to b2, and then uh, 3x1 plus 4x2 plus 11x3 equals to b3. Okay, so the net effect of um, having n be the diagonal is more or less, it's like just keeping uh, the x1 component in the first equation, the x2 component in the second equation, and the x3 component in the third equation on the left-hand side, and then moving all the rest of it to the right. Okay, so what I've done here is that I have 9x1 is equal to b1 minus x2 minus x3. 10x2 is equal to b1, I'm sorry, b2 minus 2x1 minus 3x2. And then uh, 11x3 equals to 
be 3 minus 3x1 minus 4x2. Right, so this uh, you can again think of as being a little bit like a fixed point equation, and then I have to divide appropriately. Okay, so that gives me uh, x1 is equal to 1 ninth b1 minus x2 minus x3, x2 is equal to 1 tenth b2 minus 2x1 minus 3x2, and x3 equals to minus, sorry, x3 equals to 1 over 11 of b3 minus 3x1 minus 4x2. Okay, so again, this now is a fixed point type it um, condition, uh, but sort of for a vector valued object. Uh, and when you look at the fixed point uh, iteration associated with that, you get exactly uh, this expression which we had before. Okay? All right. Um, so let me just again <coughs> be clear, right? So the fixed point iteration for this. is that everything on the left, it's like involves the k plus first term, right? So x1 or n plus first term, n plus one, x2, n plus one, x3, n plus one. And everything on the right, you think of as being associated with the nth iterate. One ninth b1 minus x2n minus x3n, one tenth, uh, b2 minus 2x1n minus 3x2n. And 1 over 11 of b3 minus 3x1n minus 4x2n. Okay? So anyway, so this is what is called the uh, Jacobi iteration. Okay? And all right, so one thing it's like, um, which is worth observing, which is that um, in practice, of obviously it's like you can compute uh, the nth plus first uh, sort of iterate for x1, it's like using the first equation. Um, but when you're computing uh, the nth plus first iterate for x2, I'm still using the nth iterate for uh, x1, right? So you might ask, well, what happens if I, instead of doing that, I was to um, actually use the fact that I know now have an n plus first iterate for x1 and replace this with n plus one. Uh, and then when I've computed x2 n plus one, I can use the n plus first iterate for both x1 and x2 to compute the n plus first iterate for x3, okay? So, so that leads to a different uh, sort of iteration that's what's called the gauss seidel iterate. Um, and and uh, so um, let's leave it here for now. It's like, but we'll see in the next uh, discussion that um, <coughs> you, you do end up getting um, something a little bit different. Um, and it, it still fits into this general framework, which we talked about um, for a different choice of n. Okay, so let me just stop here for now. Um,